How do you know when you are in love with a robot? You feel a little spark. Hey there, everybody. Welcome to episode number 523 of this here electronic engineering podcast called Amelia's Weekly Fish Fry, brought to you by eejournal.com and written, produced, and hosted by yours truly, Amelia Dalton. Are you ready for some robotic fun? Well, you're in luck, because my guest this week is Brom Vanderbort from IMEC, and we're delving into the world of soft robotics. Did you know that IMEC and VUB have teamed up to develop soft robotic systems that can feel pain? It's true, and Brom and I are talking all about it. We also investigate the challenges in the realm of soft robotics, the breakthrough technology innovations included in these new soft robotic systems, and where Brom thinks soft robotics are headed in the future. So, without further ado, please welcome Brom to Fish Fry. Okay, hi Brom, thank you so much for joining me today. Hello. So we're talking about soft robotics today, and there are a lot of possibilities in this realm, but also a lot of challenges as well. So can you address both of these issues? What kind of possibilities do soft robotics open up for us? And what are the biggest challenges you're seeing in this realm? Yeah, so classical robots are made from metal or hard plastics, which make them very precise and other are the more traditional industrial robots that can be found. But that also makes them very dangerous. While if we look to the human body and also to many animals, then we see that we're made of soft material. And for example, an octopus is completely made of soft materials. And so the soft robotics field takes those inspiration to put also intelligence in the design and the use of materials to make robots that are better able to interact with humans or unknown dynamically changing environments. And so that is a new way of building robots, but that also comes with challenges. And of course, those soft materials are vulnerable to damage. With sharp objects and other uh, reasons, uh, the, the material can be damaged. And that means that or you need to go to complex repairments, or you need to throw the robot away and contributing to the big pile of e-waste. And so the human body and animals found a very interesting solution to that. And that is the capability to heal wounds and fractures. And we thought, why not give this possibility to robots? I love that. Now, IMEC and VUB have teamed up to develop soft robotic systems that can feel pain. So, Brom, give my audience more details about these systems, what they can do, and what kind of applications you're envisioning for this kind of technology. We have the idea that the robot should be able to repair itself. And so we embed in those soft robots also, we embed soft sensors not only to feel the the state of the system or the forces, but we also had the idea to let them feel pain because then the system could react to it and start the healing process in order to start the robot to heal itself. And so in order to do that, we had to do the whole value chain from developing new materials, new processing techniques, so using molding or 3D printing in order to turn those materials into robot applications and we developed a lot of demonstrators and especially robotic hands and fingers that can grasp different objects feel it but also you can completely cut the finger in two and then the polymers that are the fingers made of but also the sensors are made of self-healing materials so they have the ability to completely recover and as such re-go to the original function for which they are made by grasping and so on. Excellent. Now, Brom, to design these soft robotic systems, you guys have developed an approach that includes several breakthrough innovations. So can you talk to me about this approach and all that it includes? Yeah. So when we look to our human hand, it's not made of one material. We have several materials uh, from very rigid materials like bones and nails to very soft materials like, for example, the fat. And so we developed a portfolio of materials that are able to sell a feel. 
with also a wide variety of different mechanical properties. So we can make them very stiff and very elastic, but moreover, because they have the same chemical bonds from which they're made, we can combine different materials and they will not tear at the interface which happen at the classical uh, materials. Moreover, we started to add fillers in it to give additional functionality to it. So if we can, for example, we can make them magnetic or we can make them conductive. We can make, for example, sensors uh, out of it. And then we developed several processing techniques and then we made complete robot systems out of it. Very recent publication is that we can make, for example, a voxel-based uh, robot. So voxels are the 3D version of a pixel. And so we have voxels with different properties, a stiff material, a soft material, an active material with each other. And we combine that in a gripper. And then we cut those modular robots in several pieces and we recombined the original material into a walker just to demonstrate how far we can go with this type of material. And moreover, we did additions on the whole value chain from the materials to the application so we can predict for a certain required behavior of the device, which materials we need to use, but also how the design should look like. So, Brom, I would like to know more about those self-healing materials you mentioned. And these materials can also be recycled mechanically as well, right? Yeah, so our idea is to make robots much more sustainable. We don't want that they all end up at the e-waste. And so we took sustainable on multiple cycles. So the first idea is if you have damage, for example, to your robot fingers, they can be healed. And so you, the lifetime of that part is prolonged. But imagine that you don't need a finger anymore or the damage is too serious because in contrast to the human body, we cannot grow material. So we always need to close the wound. We can both mechanically recycle the material. So we can, for example, grind it and use it again to print it. But we can also chemically recycle it. That means we can go back to the original monomers to give new functions to that material. Moreover, we're investigating biosources and also biodegradability. And so that means that sustainability is on many different levels. And as such, we want it to give a thermoplast, which are the traditional materials that can be recycled, but they don't have so interesting mechanical properties. So that's why you go to network polymers. But the big challenge is that you cannot recycle them. And that's contributing largely to the a plastic soup and the problems with recycling those advanced materials. And so these new type of materials have the advantage that you can give very interesting properties to it to make soft robots out of it, but also that you can completely recycle these materials. I love that. So, Brahm, where do you think this kind of robotic technology is headed in the future? Yeah, so thanks to several European projects, Alciro, Smart, and Alcinto, we could develop the groundbreaking novelties in it and develop lab demonstrators. But now our job is to mature more the technology and collaborate with companies in order to go to real field tests, upscale production, benchmark the technology. And I think as such, we can deliver real innovation in robotics and real solutions for a more sustainable future. But we think that also other applications can benefit from it because in our industry and society, we lose a lot of plastics, which can be damaged. Think of this, your smartphone that falls, your tires that can get punctured. And imagine that we can, like humans and animals, prolong the lifespan without overdimensioning it by giving it self-healing capability. I love that. Thank you so much for bringing this technology to my attention, Brom. All right. So before you go, it's time for an off the cuff question. Now, Brom, since you haven't been on my show before, you get our standard off the cuff here at Fish Fry. So Brom, if you could have one meal right now, it doesn't matter if it's on the other side of the world, the restaurant is closed, you need a passport to get there. What would you have? Yeah, as a Belgian, of course, I like Belgian chocolates. <laughs> yeah. And of course, in uh, 
various forms. They can be made. So also in 3D printing. So it's already evening, right? <laughs> Before bedtime. So then always I like a good piece of chocolate. I love it. Me too. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining me, Brahm. Thank you a lot. Have you heard of Dina? It's a new electronic engineering print magazine called Designing Electronics North America that features a variety of articles written by electronic engineers and dignitaries in the world of electronic engineering. And one of those dignitaries is none other than me. That's right. I wrote a piece a couple months ago for Dina called Not All Robots Are Shaped Like Humans. If you want to read this article for yourself, I've included a link to the Dina edition featuring my article on page 24 in the YouTube description for this episode and on the fish frying page on eejournal.com. Was today's fish fry just not enough robotics for you? Don't you worry. We have a whole playlist on YouTube called Robotics on Amelia's Weekly Fish Fry. This playlist includes all sorts of robotic goodness, including my interview with Phil Hutchinson from Element 14 about their Twist, Turn, and Move Robotics Design Challenge. I also investigate self-replicating living robots and Joyce, the first humanoid robot with intelligent vision. And you can check out this playlist by clicking the link below the player on this week's fish frying page on eejournal.com by clicking the link in this week's YouTube description, or you can just head on over to youtube.com slash eejournal and scroll down a bit. It'll be there. Hey, have you checked out EE Journal on social media yet? Well, you should. You can find us at facebook.com slash EE Journal. If you're into Twitter, you can monitor our tweets at EE Journal TFM. And don't forget, if you would like to follow my personal Twitter account, check out Amelia D. 1978. And hey, if LinkedIn is more your thing, I completely understand. You can follow us or me on LinkedIn as well. And we have that YouTube channel I just mentioned, youtube.com slash eejournal. Folks, it is chock full of all kinds of techie videos, including our very popular Chalk Talk webcast series hosted by me. And you can subscribe to our EE Journal YouTube channel as well. Also, by clicking the links below the player on this week's Fish Frying page, you can subscribe to this here podcast through Spotify, Podbean, or Apple Podcasts. And remember, if you'd like to further support this podcast, please leave me a review on that podcasting platform of your choice. It really does help. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. If you know of any cool new technology or, heck, you just want to chat, shoot me a line at Amelia, that's A-M-E-L-I-A, at eejournal.com, or post a comment on our forums on EE Journal. For the week of March 17th, 2023, I'm Amelia Dalton, and you've been fried.